By the beginning of April, most of the Australian battalions were around an area that formed a triangle where the Somme and Ankle rivers meet, near the city of Amiens. The Germans were still determined to keep moving away from their lines because they could see the city of Amiens less than 20 kilometres away. They were intent on taking it because they knew it was the key to their victory. In 1918, there were over 90,000 people living here in Amiens. It had always been a prosperous city and around the 13th century, they decided to show off their stuff and build this massive cathedral that stands behind me. Even today, it's considered one of the best of the Gothic style cathedrals in all of France and it can be seen for miles around, which is the reason why in both world wars, it was partially destroyed by shell fire. But the reason the Germans wanted this place so bad is not so they could go to church. It was because of the railway lines. Amiens was and still is today a major railway junction. Trains from here head off in every direction, which is why whoever controlled this city controlled the supply routes to all of Northern France. With the success of their major breakthrough in late March, the Germans were actually closing in on Amiens. They were coming in from two main directions, from the northeast, a town called Albert, and directly east, the village of villers bretonneau Shells were constantly falling here, and as a result, the city was quite a mess, which is hard to imagine as you walk around today because you see a vibrant, meticulously laid out city with little or no sign at all of the destruction of two world wars. I have to admit that the first time I caught the train for the short trip up from Amiens to villers bretonneux I was as excited as a kid going to a chocolate factory without his parents. I was pushing hard against the window trying to catch a first glimpse of landmarks and points that I knew so well from books and photos. When I left the train and stood at the villers bret station, I really felt a great sense of satisfaction. You see, before I left Australia, I decided not to hire a car and try to zoom everywhere all over the French countryside and battlefields. I knew that in the short week that I had, I would run myself into the ground and not really make any connection to the people. So I opted to stay in the little Anzac Hotel in Amiens and catch the train up to villers bret each day. I still ran myself into the ground, but I saw a lot more of the town and the people and the surrounding battlefields by walking around on my two not-so-fast feet. It doesn't take you long to work out that there are two sides of this pretty little town. There's the uh, peaceful side and the not-so-peaceful side. Up here on the north end of town, running from east to west, is one of the many historic and famous Roman roads. These arterials run all over the French countryside, and they're dead straight, linking villages and towns in the most efficient possible way. But after just a few minutes up this end of town, I was ready to head back into the quieter part. These are my first few hours in Villers Bretonneux. And already walking around you see pockets of Australians everywhere and you really do feel at home. Every shop window has a kangaroo, a koala or a flag. And uh, some of them are predicting that there could be over 5,000 people. Well, some are saying they're expecting over 10,000 people at the ceremony and it's still two days away. So there really is something special going on here.
So now I feel like we're orientated with the town. Let's try and pick up the 1918 story from where we left off. Within the first few weeks of April, the German advance had slowed down almost to a halt, stopping well before taking the city of Amiens. There had been one failed attempt to take Villa Bretonneux, but the German leaders were determined to finish the job. After an intense gas shelling that caused a lot of Australian casualties, the enemy finally broke and took the town on the day of April the 24th. Now there was some confusion about just how far they had penetrated the British line, but regardless, a counter-attack had to happen and it had to happen immediately.